Hey everyone, I'm Jay. And I'm Sean. And that's Sean, and we watched a movie. It's true. So it is available right now on home premiere. So you have to pay like your $15 to rent because it's a new, new release that went straight to VOD. VOD. <laughs> yes. So this is The Secret Garden, yet another adaptation of that very popular 1911 book. 1911? That's right. I looked it up. Didn't know that from the top of my head. But I had a couple of issues with, <laughs> with some stuff in the movie and I had to see how, where, when did, was this really written? I knew it went way back. I have read the book, uh, not recently, I read it as a child. In fact, I loved a movie of it as a child. Uh, looked that one up too. It was from 1993 originally. Uh, a copy of it was just floating in our home on v VHS <laughs> when we were kids and we loved that movie. We loved watching it. Um, but I found that maybe I didn't remember everything about it because first off, I was surprised by what a dark beginning there is for this poor Mary. Like she's in, I don't know, even India. if it's India or Pakistan, but the two countries are, well, the two, they're separating into two countries. It's a time of a lot of violence and upheaval and whatever else. And she kind of gets overlooked, like her parents die really quickly. And she just gets left alone in this house, <laughs> which is really alarming when you think about it. So finally, somebody finds her and she, you know, she's dirty and hungry, but alive. And they pack her off to England to live with an uncle she's never met before. And when a member of his staff shows up at the train station to meet her, uh, this would be the wonderful Mrs. Medlock. If you read the book, you know she's not wonderful. Played by Julie Walters, which I was like kind of sad about because she's so wonderful. I love her. And then she's in the movie for like, you know. Five minutes. Yeah, here and there. Although I looked it up and in the 1993 version I loved, it was uh, Dame Maggie Smith. Oh. I just didn't know she was, she was a thing. you know, a thing at the yeah. time. And she's blurred in my memory. So I never knew that I loved her even back then. Um, so yeah, so she goes to her uncle's house and Mrs. Medlock is telling her like, I don't know if you'll even ever meet your uncle, but if you do get to talk to him, don't stare, do not stare at his affliction. <laughs> it's like, this is the little girl who's just arrived in this house. And like all, uh, her only welcome is a warning. And she, the girl is so desperately lonely. She makes friend with a mangy dog on the estate. <laughs> uh, are we supposed to call it an estate? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. It is an estate. Thank it's you. not a manor. Thank you. I thought I had blundered. You did right. How embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, she has, she seems to be like afraid of dogs, and yet this is the only creature who will come near her and show her any affection. And all of the, the staff are just treating her like she's a bratty little kid. Well, she is a bratty little kid. Yeah. She's, she, she might be a bit of a little brat. Uh, who just lost both of her parents, survived a war by herself, <laughs> and is now living in the coldest man in England's home. Yeah, she hasn't had a great life. Um, she, no. So I really feel shitty about all of these staff who are so like snitty at her. I'm like, this is a little girl. She can't help how she was raised and nobody is even correcting her now. They're just calling her a snob behind her back and not even like- Well, to her face sometimes. Yeah, also to her face. That's the thing. Nobody gives her a fucking hug, guys. Like it's crazy. That's why I looked up the, like, what year was it that you could treat a kid like this and not even be self-conscious about writing character? Like Martha, the young servant in her room, is a very sympathetic character in my mind. Now it's 2020 and I'm an adult and I'm watching this and I'm like, shame on all of you. This poor little, oh, she needs therapy. She's been through traumatic events. I don't events. think therapy had been invented yet. <sighs> well. Yeah, just his locker in the lying room. Lying in bed all day. Yeah, locker in her room. Yes. So I mean, likely you know the story. It's an age-old story. She finds a secret garden. 
Uh, she eventually makes a friend in the elusive Dickon, Martha's little brother. Yeah, elusive he's hard because to track he down. seems to like run away from. Yeah. He works in the moors. The foggy moors. The very always foggy moors. Um, yeah, I remember in my, in my movie. I'm calling it my movie. The movie of my youth, the '93 version. Uh, Dickon was very good with animals. Uh, he mends the mangy dog's paw, but. He's not talking to birds and shit. Uh, and eventually they also make friend with the invalid son of the uncle, who they didn't even know exist. People seem to pretend he doesn't exist because Mary feels like she's hearing his cries at night, but everyone like assures her it's just the wind until she finds a little boy crying in bed. And like the staff are also kind of shit to him and his dad, you know, oh, his dad is just so deranged with grief over the loss of his wife that he doesn't really like even looking at his son or anything. Like everything is just shut up and put away. Mm -hmm. And even Mary, it's because Mary's mother was his wife's twin sister. So it's, oh, just painful. It's so painful that we should just put our children away in drawers. Yeah. Which is what he basically did with his son. Yes, he did. And Mary comes along and balls it all up by taking him outdoors, which he has not even seen the light of day. It's crazy. And they have pretty much like brainwashed this kid into believing he's totally incapacitated when he's not. I think his father was just scared that doing anything might kill his son. And so he's not allowed his son to even leave bed. Right. But anyways, now that they have a secret garden, they can convene there and have all kinds of fun. And they have a dog, a dog and a secret garden. What else do you need? <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> so I'll just uh, mention the three kids. It's a Dixie Edgerix, what a name, who plays Mary. Emir Wilson and Eden Hayhurst. So I thought they were pretty good little guys in this movie. I, I enjoyed them, they're fine. Nothing bad to say about them. Nothing really bad to say about the movie as a whole. And yet I wasn't loving it. Because it wasn't um, your movie. I don't know. Like, I was really trying to keep an open mind because I was afraid I was just going to be biased. I'm like, what's the use of that? There's a lot, we're allowed to make or remake movies. Um, and, and maybe there is just like a thing in the universe where we just have to keep retelling some of these stories every few years. Just maybe we'll trick a f few new kids into reading the book. I don't know. Um, I was surprised to learn that this garden wasn't just secret, but kind of magic. Very magical. Um, although I then watched the like trailer for my movie, and there was magic in it too. I just didn't remember it. So that's when I'm realizing, like, oh, I think I like I. This is what we do. We infuse our memories with emotion because oh, childhood spending time with my sisters, whatever. So it's got this rosy glow about it uh, that the movie itself probably doesn't deserve. Uh, and it's kind of based on a lot of wrong things. Like, <laughs> I just, uh, it's better in my memory than it probably is on tape, if you could even play tape anymore, which you can't. Um, so yeah, there's nothing wrong with this secret garden and certainly uh, 2020, is that right, 2020, yeah. Uh, CGI is much better than 1993 CGI. Um, so there's that going for it. Did you think uh, this movie had anything going for it? Uh, it was fine. Okay. It, That's not a pull quote they're going to throw on the movie no, case. No, they're not. I'm afraid. I mean, it I guess it's fine. It, I mean, maybe it will be. If <laughs> maybe that's the best they'll yeah. have, yeah. It's not a bad movie. <laughs> no, it's not. But it didn't really capture me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like, I don't think I've seen the 1993 version. <laughs> but I feel like that version probably would be just fine. That mm -hmm. maybe my problem is that this movie doesn't really seem like it needed to be remade. 
Well, this feels very true. I'm watching a movie like this, and I'm sure you do it too. We think about our little niece and nephews when they come for sleepovers and we have to pick a movie that uh, a four-year-old girl and an almost nine-year-old boy and the two in between can all watch together. Yeah. And this movie isn't it. No. In fact, I don't think this movie would please anyone in the bunch, to no. be honest. No, I think they would be very bored by it. Yes. So I think this movie is it's not exactly aimed at children. It is a little dark at times. It is a little slow at times. Um, and the adventuring is not quite up to 2020 standards of adventure. No, it's not. You know, they're just kids playing outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> That's Which, literally it. Yeah. yeah. They don't even have a trampoline. No. Well, if you can believe it. So I kind of think maybe there was a missed opportunity to update the story a little. Certainly when I see yeah. like how badly they were treating this little girl who really didn't do anything wrong. Maybe just needed a hug and a kiss. Yeah, I think um, updating it would have yes. made a difference. To so say the one that thing they do is they inject a little color into the cast, which I appreciate. But that was a very small thing to do. And the story itself remained think pretty faithful to the source material it feels old mm -hmm. so I assume right. it is yeah yeah well that's the thing like it's just the story makes you uncomfortable now and <laughs> so maybe maybe this is one of those stories we can afford to let go a little bit or change up well that's the thing if yeah. we're not willing to update it then then don't remake it. we've got enough of those like there's a lot of those movies out there there's still a lot of versions i i know the one that i grew up with but there's already a lot of versions we probably didn't need another one uh colin firth and julie walters who are wonderful are criminally underused uh, and I, I shouldn't even say criminally they're no. small parts to begin just with. Just not so, really their story. Yeah. Exactly. So it, it just kind of seems sad to like not get to see them as much as you want to. And they're both kind of not great people. No. So I don't know. I, I just, it's a sad message to send kids. <laughs> like, guess what? If your mom and dad both die super tragically, you could be sent to like hell. <laughs> And then the adults will try to shame you because your dress is dirty. Like, I don't know. I was <laughs> not really happy with a lot of this stuff. So, I don't know. It's just not a story for me anymore, I guess. And I need to, like, strip the nostalgia off of the love for the other one and just realize this story is not meant for this time. Yeah, yeah. well, that's a lesson in itself, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm-hmm. There you go. A, a challenge to future generations. <laughs> I think we can do better than this. Yeah, I and agree. we should. Yeah. You know? All right. So if you're curious about this one, I'd say wait. Definitely wait, wait until, until it's, it's cheap, cheap or free yeah. on Netflix or whatever. $15 is a hefty price for a movie that yeah. doesn't have that much to say. Yeah. It's not adding a lot of new stuff into the world, so you could probably rent the old, the old one, one from your library for free maybe even on tape <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks for watching everyone bye